Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. You guys made it. Isn't that awesome? You made it. You're still here. You're alive. Some of you guys barely are here. I was reminded when when I was sitting down earlier that I can't remember the story. Help me to get this right. But there's this parakeet. Um, who, who would always have a, a song in his heart. He'd always have a, oh, it's Little Chippy. That's his name. Little Chippy was a parakeet who always had a song in his heart. He's always singing and just having great songs and stuff like that. And so the owner of, that, of, the, of the parakeet, he had to clean his cage out one day. So he gets the vacuum and uh, he's over there. He opens up the cage and he's vacuuming the, you know, the bottom of the cage and stuff. And right when he's vacuuming, we got a, he, got to, he gets a phone call. And when he gets a phone call, he runs over and gets the phone and he leaves the vacuum hose on there. And next thing you know, little Chippy gets inside of the vacuum hose and he goes through all the soot. He's in there in the bag and stuff. And, and uh, the, the guy's like, oh my God, I can't believe I just killed my parakeet. And so he opens up the bag and sure enough, little Chippy's there, but he's all ragged out. He's like freaking out, like just what happened in this storm and stuff. And so immediately he gets him to get out all that ashes and all that stuff. So he takes him to the sink. He turns it all, the water on, he throws him inside of the water and he's drowning him, you know, in the water and stuff. And afterwards he gets a blow dryer and he starts to- throwing the blow dryer on. And you know, he's getting, he's getting everything. And at the very end, you know, little Chippy's just freaking out like what just happened from one day to the next and the whole point of this is this is that in life sometimes especially this last year in 2020 man you guys have been sucked up dried up blown up all this stuff's happened to you and the whole goal of it was the enemy's trying to take that song away from your heart but nothing is able to take that song away from your heart if you don't let it amen so regardless if you look all jacked up or whatever you made it you're here and it's awesome amen okay i thought i would remember that song but during the pandemic little johnny was uh, in school and little Johnny's teacher was talking about marriage and she was talking about relationships. And so she asked little Johnny, he goes, little Johnny, what kind of wife do you want, little Johnny? And Johnny said, man, I want a wife, my wife to be like the moon. He goes, what do you mean? It's like, I mean, do you want her to be calm and beautiful and bright? And little Johnny said, no, I want her to arrive at night and disappear by morning. (laughs) And my point is that after this past, this past year, some of you guys might be thinking about like that, you know, about your spouse and all the stuff that you guys have endured this year. But um, you know what? We made it all. We made it together as a church, as a body. We're still alive. We're still, you know, worshiping God. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. And that's a beautiful thing. So this morning, the last service of the year, you know, there's a lot to talk about, but I just had, I wanted to come and give you as a teacher an exam. Okay. But um, I want you to understand this. Don't be afraid or don't feel any condemnation because you already passed. Just to let you know, already, you already passed in his name. So, but every single one of us, um, we made it through this global pandemic. We made it through all the forest fires down in the West. We made it through the different hurricanes that came our way. We made it through all the political tension. We made it through all of our kids crying and going crazy. We've made it through all the, you know, all the stuff that happened throughout this whole year. The financial stress, the relational stress, the kids staying at home, your husband staying at home, your wife staying at home, and just all the stuff that was going on, we made it through. Mask wearing, less traveling, you know, confined into our house. And we all overcame that. Now, the 2020 for us was the great revealer. You know, I was thinking about this, that this, this year for me personally, I felt like I was angry more. Whoa, that's, you're the only one? Okay. That's, Joel said that too. He goes, man, I'm, I'm so upset and, you know, stuff like that. And I realized that, you know what? Uh, it revealed what was already on the inside of us. Yes. Pressure reveals stuff, doesn't it? Because yeah. I remember, it's not any different. Whenever I was, when I first came to Christ at 19, 20 years old or so, man, we still had pressures in life. There was still stuff going on. I mean, you know, I still got a, a speeding ticket because I was driving too fast. You know, my flat tires went, I mean, the tires got flat. And I still had stuff that happened. There's all kinds of chaos and all kinds of opportunities to overcome back then, just like it was this past year. But my focus back then, I was so centered and so focused more on, on what God did for me that I was, so, I was a whole lot more joyful. And I didn't allow the circumstances and the stuff that I had no control over to dictate what was on the inside of me. 
And this year, for whatever reason, I guess because we heard the news all the time, we heard people all the time, we heard, everywhere we were at, there was just kind of this negative vibe everywhere. And if the police officer, you know, uh, got you, got you, you know, I'm not talking about you, Kobe, but anyways, if, if you got arrested by a police officer, you're blaming it on COVID, you know? You know, it was COVID made me do that. COVID made me drink more. COVID made me go faster. COVID made me spank my kids more and more and more. Okay. Back then, I remember getting a ticket when I first got saved. I'm driving to Dallas and I get a ticket and I pull over. So, yes, sir, officer. He goes, do you know what you were doing? I said, yes, sir. I was speeding, sir. <laughs> all happy. <laughs> like, I'm guilty. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a ticket, man. I appreciate you doing all your work, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. And you'd have done that in 2020. I'm like, what the heck's wrong with you? You're crazy. I wasn't speeding. Anyways, the difference back then and today, for me anyways, personally, was I got a little off focus. And I don't know about you, but I got a little sidetracked every now and then. You know what I'm talking about? But we're still here. God's still faithful. He still loves me. I'm the best Mexican son he has. And I'm just very, very happy of that. Amen. And for all of you here at Crossroads Church, uh, can I just share from my heart this morning? Because I don't necessarily have a message, so to speak, but I just wanted to share as your pastor. You know, we've been doing this church. This is going to be our 15th year entering into, the, into here. And I will say that this is probably one of the more challenging years, but we made it. I mean, it's, we're still here. We're still operating. And you guys, um, your faith stood out to me. If, if Jesus were to walk into this church this morning, he, he would have a smile and he would be pleased with your faith. Amen. He would be pleased with your faith. You know, you became the church in action this year. When they tried to cancel Easter, we didn't have a service, but somehow we found another, a one way to, 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 to offer stuff to, to your children and to take communion one with another. Amen. You know, when they tried to tell us not to gather at Christmas, you guys packed this place down. It was crazy. You know, when they told us not to go to the Central Park and do our lighting, our candle service, we brought a big old light over here, and you, about 400 people came into this place, and we worshiped God together, and it was awesome. You overcame every obstacle. They canceled our mission trips, but we still led families, and we still provided for families in other countries. You gave thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to the people in other parts of the world and fed families that were going hungry through this whole pandemic. You were the church in action. We didn't gather physically, but we remained connected. During this test and tension, our students, our students became worshipers. I mean, all of a sudden, you see a bunch of young kids in here, young students, um, they didn't allow the, the, them not being active in school or whatever was going on in their home to keep pressing in. Delilah did a fantastic job with the leadership and the leadership with her team. And the, we had students up here leading us into worship and leading us into God's presence. It's powerful. Our children, you know, they were so adamant about coming back to church. They made parents come back to church because they, they, you know, they wanted to be a part of it. And some of you guys are here because you're children. They weren't, you weren't leading the way. The children were leading the way. And that's okay. Whatever it takes. We knew that we needed to be together because we're not meant to be separated and isolated and alone. I don't know if there's anything that you've learned, learn that lesson, is that we are not meant to be by ourselves. Uh, Christianity is incarnate, just like Jesus came and he put on flesh and bone and he moved into our neighborhood. And so it is with the body of Christ. We are to be a part and connected one to another in order to give life and receive life from each other. Amen. Our staff didn't get laid off. Thank God to you. You know, um, we brought, what's that? We increased. Yes, as a matter of fact, we hired more people. And, uh, you know, we, we were able to do pavement, the pavement out there. We were able to extend the, the building back over here. We're fixing to repaint the whole building, you know, here in the next few weeks or so. So in the middle of all the chaos, all we did was wake up and the next day is like, okay, Lord, what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? Because there's nothing, at least in my schedule, I couldn't schedule anything in advance because it would constantly change. And so now I know why the Lord told me, uh, Marcus, when he started the church 15 years ago, because I'm a systems guy. I want to, I want to, you know, I, I have a vision for the future and I want steps to, 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 to carry it out. But when I started the church, I had the whole structure developed. And uh, the Lord said, you're not going to do this church this way. Like, what do you mean? This is the only way I know how to do it. Because we, we helped the church go from about 600 or so to about 4,000. And I was a systems guy behind it. And so when he asked us to come and start Crossroads, it was like I had a system already, a structure. I still have it when, when we first started the church. And he said, put that aside. That's not how you're going to do this church, Marcus. Well, I don't know any other way to do it. And he says, well, he goes, as you go, you'll know. 
as you go, you'll know. And so it was just like that. There were days that we would just pray um, all week long and not prepare a message until we got on the stage, like right now, and then the message would come. As we, as we go, we'll know. And now I'm looking back, and I'm thankful why he asked us to, to, to serve this way, to lead this way, is because days like this and years like this. And at the end of the service, I'm going to share with you a word that I feel like is for uh, 2021 for all of us. Because it's not going to get any better, folks. And unless you and I learn how to uh, walk with God day by day and listen to his voice day by day, uh, we're going to be left behind a little bit. And so there, there's some things that are coming that we, I don't know in my head, but I just feel like in my spirit that we need to prepare on a daily basis. He gives us our daily bread. He daily loads us with benefits. Amen. Day by day, whenever they were out and the children of Israel came out of um, uh, uh, Egypt and went into the promised land, uh, God told them, hey, every day I'm going to provide manna for you. And at the end of the day, you need to throw that away. You can't live on yesterday's manna. You know, every day you need to go and get a fresh dose of manna and then take, let, me, let me take care of you that day. He was with the pillar of fire at night. He was with the cloud by day. Day by day, he led them into victory, into the promised land. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so sometimes, yes, sometimes um, God, the reason why is because God's intentional about these things. He's intentional about how he wants to um, disciple you and nurture you. You know, as a, as a mom, when you have children, you don't just pump, you know, a week's worth of milk and give it to the baby in the crib and say, hey, take care of yourself for this week. Right? You, you got to, well, you, you got to give them every day. You got to give it to them daily, daily, daily. And so it is with your relationship with God every single day. Connect with your God. Not, if 30 minutes of Sunday morning is all you're getting fed, uh, whoa, 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 be careful, okay? Because you're going to get left behind. And so there's some things that are coming up, but we all made it here. And it's just a beautiful thing. And I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in Philippians, the first chapter, where it says, I thank my God every time I remember you in, in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I just want to say, man, I am so proud to be a part of this church. And I just want to say on behalf of the staff and uh, all of us, Pastor Joel, all of us, we just want to say thank y'all for believing, for continuing to come to church, for continuing to give and tithe. You know, that first week when um, all the toilet paper was gone? You guys remember that? Um, we were wondering what the heck just happened. And no one came to church. We shut it down. And we're like, well, how are we going to do this? Next thing you know, people, people didn't, y'all didn't know how to give y'all's offering online, many of y'all, because y'all bring checks and stuff like that. And so next thing you know, little by little, after a couple of weeks, because we had a 50% drop, I'm like, oh, heck, who's getting fired now? And, but we, we didn't think that way, honestly. We're just like, man, God's going to provide, you know, we are built upon a life of faith. And God will take care of us, even if he has to bring ravens to feed us. I just believe that. And so all of a sudden, we would get Bibles sitting on the outside of the double doors. And at first, we were thinking, maybe it's got COVID in it. Don't get that. Leave it alone, girls. For real, like, I didn't know what was going on. You know, I know there was a global thing or whatever was going on. And then I finally would get the Bible and open it up, and your tithes were in there. And then people would just drop things. It's just so beautiful to see grace working through your life. It's almost as if you were saying, this is my church. I'm going to take care of my people. I'm going to take care of the church. I'm going to take care of pastor and the team. We're going to continue to preach the gospel. We're going to continue to love people regardless of what's going on. And we don't even know what's going on. And uh, on, on behalf of us, again, we just want to say thank you so much. Keep believing. Keep trusting. You know what? God's faithful. He's going to take care of you as well. Amen. He's not, never going to leave you deserted. He's not. <clears throat> now, in the early, now, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but in the early um, early church in the early century, the first century, they were known. They didn't have a building, so to speak. They didn't have a Bible. All they had was a command from Jesus. Go love one another as I have loved you. Go demonstrate that love to people. You know, they didn't have a New Testament. Go with me to the book of John. I'm going to talk to you about John's gospel. They were the gospel. And that reminds me of what you guys were doing. You know, when we built the church, we established it around what we call a three-legged stool. And a three-legged stool is what's the foundation of what's in this church. And it means a, a pure word, a, a relevant word of God is one of the, one of the stools, one of the legs. Uh, re, a good worship, just a, a worship experience where we can lift our, our hands up and lift our hearts up to God. And relationships. Connected. We make sure we stay connected with people. 
And the reason why this is established on that is because of this. Because if somebody comes in and destroys this building, they can't destroy the church. Because I guarantee you, I will see you under a tree somewhere, and we're going to worship God together. We're going to get the scriptures and read the scriptures, and we're going to stay connected. Amen? And so, so you, can't, you can't destroy the church. You might can destroy this building, but you can't destroy a movement. You can't destroy people's faith whose, whose hearts are after Jesus. And I'm so thankful that you guys have that on the inside of you. You know, it's not enough just to believe correctly. We have to act correctly. And you guys did well by acting correctly. We have to act on what we believe. Our hope is not anchored upon any kind of circumstances and uh, theological terms or anything. Our hope is anchored on an event, an event that Jesus Christ not only died, but on the third day, he rose again from the dead and he's alive. And because he lives, you and I can have hope and we can offer hope to those individuals. And that's why I had Abby sing that song because one of my favorite songs is, man, you keep hope alive in us, regardless of what darkness is all around us. And I love that about my Jesus. Hebrews, the fourth chapter says it this way. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our what? Confession. For we don't have a high priest. Now this is talking about Jesus. For those of us who are followers of Jesus, this is our high priest. And it says, we don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, the opposite is true. He does sympathize with our weaknesses. He understands and knows when we're going through weak times in life and stuff happens. He understands that. He sympathizes with us, right? But in all points, he was tempted just like we are, but yet he did it without sin. So then he encourages us, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace because we have direct access to our heavenly father, just like Jesus had direct access to his heavenly father. And when Jesus was tempted in all points as, as, as we are, guess what Jesus did? Jesus went to the throne of grace. Jesus went to the father's heart and he began to communicate with the father, help me how to navigate through this. And so he's saying, therefore, let us do the same thing so that we can obtain mercy and find grace for help in time of need. When you and I get to the mercy of God, when we get to the throne of God, there's usually two things that we need. Either we messed up so bad that we need God's mercy or we need help to try to navigate through the situation that we're going through. We need God's grace to help us in those, in those difficult times. Amen? Amen? And guess what? His ear is open to your cry. Amen. Don't think it not. His ear is open to your cry. He knows exactly what your family's going through. He knows exactly what your children are going through. He knows exactly the heart that you have for your city or for your business or whatever it is that he has you involved in. If you delight yourself in him, he drops these desires in your heart. And when he drops those things and nobody can take those things out, you always wonder, well, how is it going to work? And how, is, how are we going to make that come to pass? Well, just let God be God. You stay faithful to him and serve him and you watch. He'll open up the next door. Amen. He will. <clears throat> But it's, yes, I love that. Goodbye, 2020. But there's still a whole lot more to come. So I was looking at my, um, do you have my journal there? I was looking at my journal this morning. And here's my test to you. Y'all ready for a test? All right. And I was reading and reflecting upon some of the things that I wrote. Uh, this time last year. Every year in December, I take some time and just reflect and examine my own heart and find out where I'm at, locate myself, and get some direction and just move forward. But last year, I was reminded of Proverbs, the 12th chapter. In Proverbs, the 12th chapter, there is um, an indicator, there is a guideline. It's talking about the righteous people and how they are to conduct themselves and, and what kind of fruit they're to have as they are walking with God. And so it's very, very clear. So it's an examination. So uh, there's, I'm just going to put, put four, point four things out real quick. And I want you to examine yourself and examine your life. But the righteous say, it says that the root of the righteous can't be moved in, one, in verse three. Now, righteous doesn't mean that you're perfect. Righteous just means that you are living your life and conducting your life in a manner that's trying to please the Father. Okay? That makes sense? Is that all of us here this morning? Yes. All right. And so it says, these are some qualities, these are some characteristics of individuals who are trying to walk with God. Uh, one, they'll never be moved. In verse 7, it says that the house of the righteous, they're going to stand. In verse 12, it says that the root of the righteous will always yield fruit. And then in uh, verse 28, it says that the path of the righteous, there's always life involved in that path. So let me look at those four real quick in about 10 minutes, five minutes, and then we'll close this morning. Is that all right? 
The first thing it says that the righteous, verse three, uh, the root of the righteous can't be moved. The righteous individuals, those who walk with God, if they really truly know the Lord, examine yourself, listen to this. The atrocities of life, um, the stuff that happens that we are not, you know, that we are not in control of, those things will never move your life. In other words, your life has a firm footing. And you might slip here and there. You might fall, but God graces you to get back up. And he points you in the right direction over and over and over again. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm being honest with myself. I fell a few times this year. And I just like, man, that's stupid. Why did I, you know, why did I fall into that? But, I, but the Lord would grace me. He wasn't he wouldn't doing it to condemn me. He was showing me some things that were already there. And this stuff came out. It's like, oh, I didn't realize. I thought that was gone already. And so, so he was able to lift me back up so I can just keep moving forward. Does that make sense? The root, the root of the righteous cannot be moved. I'm not led by my emotions. I'm not led by your, your feelings about me or my feelings about me. Feelings and emotions come and go. I had my therapist. Yes, I do have a therapist. And I, um, he, he's, he's very good. I'm still alive. <laughs> but the, the, my therapist told me, he goes, Remember this, this is, a fan, this is $200, guys, okay? A minute. You are not your feelings. You are not your emotions. I was on the ocean, overlooking the ocean in his backyard, and he says, you see that boat right there? And the boat's cruising down this beautiful blue sea of water. And I said, yeah, I see all the waves. He goes, that is emotion. Because emotions come, emotions go. Just like the waves, they come and they go. He goes, but you're not any of those. You're here where the rock is. He goes, and you stand your firm footing right there. You put your firm, your footing right there. It'll never be moved. And so many times we get so emotional about things that are happening or things that aren't happening the way we want them to, that we're moved by emotion. And sometimes when somebody criticizes you or does something, rejection comes, all of a sudden, you, you know, you, you identify with that so much that, you, you, that, that that becomes you, so to speak. But you are not your emotions. You are not your feelings. It says that the righteous will not be moved. The root of the righteous will not be moved. It cannot be moved. My help comes from the Lord. He is, the, he is, he is my countenance. He is everything. My rock, my refuge. It says he will not allow my foot to slip. My protector will neither slumber, will never sleep. Amen? Amen? So how is your footing? How is the root of who you are? Now, if you're honest with yourself, you're here this morning. And let me be honest for you. You have a firm footing. You're here. The Spirit of God said this morning, it's time to go to church. I've got to go hear the best Mexican preacher in the area. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I think God's going to He's probably going to trick me when I get up to heaven. He'll probably say, no Mexicans allowed. I'm like, what? He'll probably say, just kidding. Anyways. I don't know why I say that. The second thing in, in Proverbs 12 is that not only the root of the righteous won't be moved, but the house of the righteous will stand. Your home will stand. Your home will endure. Your home may be rocked, but there's an enduring spirit uh, for the men who are leading their home or for the wives who are taking care of their children and don't have dad around or don't have husband around. Your home is a rock. It says that the house of the righteous is going to stand. The enemy's goal in our life is to disgrace your home, to divide your home, to bring your home you know, into a place where it doesn't reflect who God is. But the righteous, it says that the house of the righteous, you will stand. Like Joshua said, take the lead. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And so regardless, you know, examine yourself. And I'm saying this again. I commend you because you're here. You're in the house of God. This might be your only time you were here in church this, this 2020, but you're here. And the house of the righteous will not, will always stand. And so remember that the third thing is this, in verse 12, it says that the root of the righteous again will always yield fruit. If you look back in 2020 and you look back at all the, the diversity, all the, the, the chaos, all the different things, the confusion maybe you might've been in, the stuff you might've bought into, um, maybe you didn't, you stopped going to church, maybe you stopped believing in God. Why would God allow this? Why would God allow my parent to die? Or all this kind of stuff. That might have rocked you for a moment. 
but when everything cleared, you know, the, cloud, the cloudiness cleared, you knew that God is good and he's faithful. Amen. And you had to put your trust in him. Amen? Amen. And the home that's rooted in God will stand. And in this one here, it says that the root of the righteous will yield fruit. In the middle of all the junk and all the craziness, are you still yielding? Are you still producing? Are you still increasing? Are you still growing? Are you still developing? Is the seed still being sown in people's lives? Because it says that the people who are righteous, the root of us, will still yield fruit. Examine yourself in your life this year. In the middle of all that stuff, were you still able to speak life, give life, honor other people, look at the best in others, still give when you didn't have you, when you lack yourself, still blessed, still encouraged, still believed, still hoped, still dreamed, still imagined. Were you able to do that? Because the root of the righteous will still yield fruit. Amen. Amen. It's a great, great, great thing to look at. Amen. Your hands were still up. You're worshiping. You weren't complaining. Well, maybe you were complaining, but after you stopped, you began to worship again. The enemy will always try to embitter the root of the righteous that you have and walk in a root of bitterness. You know what that's called? That's called scandalon. Scandalon is the Greek word for offense. The enemy's always trying to, 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 to allow you to buy into taking offense so that you have an embittered root, a, a, a root of bitterness on the inside of you. That's, that's what the enemy does. But the righteous won't allow their root to be bittered. It will constantly yield fruit, amen? You're seeking opportunities. Man, I know what, for me, whenever I get pressured uh, in the area of finances or pressured in the area of, of lacking you know, resources, I will take anything that I have and I'll begin to give it. I'll begin to sow it. Because I know my way out is not to hold on. My way out is to hold things loosely and give away, amen? And I've seen that happen in your life. The word root, you know, you still continue to yield fruit in the middle of all the craziness. The root always determines the what? Fruit. Are you still being fruitful? Are you still increasing? Are you still growing? Are you yielding bad fruit constantly in your life? Or are you yielding, you know, good fruit? Consider your root. Consider your surroundings. And that can determine whether or not, you, know, you might be up and down like many of us are. That's okay. The righteous the root of the righteous will always yield. And the last one is this, is verse 28 says that in the path, say in, it's a very important part, in the path of the righteous, there's life. In the path, you know, as you're walking in the path around you, there's life. The, the righteous path is always life-giving. It's encouraging. It's building up. It's strengthening people. Yes, it's full of adventure, but it's adventurous that's full of life. It's not moved by the stuff that happens to them where they become embittered souls, but they're just constantly rising up on the inside and just giving and breathing. We're life-giving people. Examine this. Here's a question. Examine the path you're in. Look around you. Look at your kids. Look at your family. Look at your neighbors. Look at your parents. Look at your cousins. Look at the crazy uncle. Look at all these folks. Look at your relationships. Look at your boyfriend. Look at your girlfriend. Look at your neighbors. I'm not saying look at them, but I'm just saying, imagine, you look at, look at them. And in that, is there life around you? Is there life around you? Or do all you see is death and chaos and burned out and frustration and I can never get enough and I'm so tired of this and this is always happening and why did I marry you and you're so stupid and I mean, I don't know, whatever. Is there life or is there more death around you? If, if, you, if you examine yourself, then consider the path. Consider the root of your life. The scripture says this, listen. In him, in Jesus, there was life. And this life was the light of men. When you and I are in Christ, he becomes the root of who you are. And if you allow and yield to who he is on the inside of you, it'll produce life and strength and hope. Even I'm not saying it's going to change your circumstances, the stuff that's happening, all I'm saying is that you'll never allow the circumstances to change you. That's good. That's and all of a sudden you're yielding yourself to him and it's just producing life. You know, one of the things that I never wanted to do was to come back to Seguin. And when the Lord told us to come back home and, and start Crossroads, and for a second, I was, you know, I was like, no. I was like, well, we could go anywhere in the world, Lord. But when we said yes to the Lord, 
And one of the reasons why I didn't want to come back is because we, you know, I felt like we've destroyed a lot of lives. We've hurt a lot of people. You know, when we were doing drugs and we were doing all this stuff, um, we just hurt people and families. And there was shame involved and connected to that. Now, he redeemed me from the shame of the past. And I wasn't, you know, focusing on that. But all of a sudden, when you come into the same environment, it's like, oh, stuff starts, you start remembering things. Hey, Mark, you remember when we, I was like, no, I don't remember. If I did, I don't want to remember because I'm a new person in Christ. That man died. I'm created now in him. And you might remember me from that, but I, I, was, I didn't want to go. I was imagining me going through scenarios after scenarios with people that I had connected with. And there's this one individual. Remember, we're talking about in the path of the righteous, there's life. And so the beautiful thing about this is that when we said yes, and we continue to see this year after year, week after week, that the thing that I was scared about the most, God would use those horrible things and horrible acts, and he himself would redeem those lives, and they would come back home, and they would come to Christ, and now their kids or their grandkids are in this church. And it's just a beautiful thing to see that my heart's desire was not to come back home because I was embarrassed about the stuff, but it was those things that God would show me how real he was and that he's way bigger than my sin in the past. And he would redeem, you know, my past and use it to exalt him and, and help prepare a good future for in this city, in this community. Last week, I um, happened to see a, a brother. I don't know if Daniel, you're here. Is Daniel here? You happen to be here? I hadn't seen Daniel in, since I was 19, 18 years old. Daniel was a guy that, um, he came to score some, some dope for me, okay? Sorry if your children are here, but he came and did, got some stuff for me. It was the first time that he ever did anything intravenously, and I helped him on that path. I hadn't remembered about Daniel in years. It's been 30-something years. And Natalie remembers that same day when that took place, how we were ruined his whole life since then. He's been in prison. Since then, he's been incarcerated over and over and over again. I haven't heard from him until about two years ago. Two years ago or so, I can't remember when it was, I get this picture in the mail, and it's from Daniel who was in prison, and he was thinking about me, how God had redeemed his life, and he was thanking me. And he had heard that I had come to Jesus, and he, draw, he draws this picture, and he brings it to me. A couple years ago, isn't that beautiful? It's so detailed. In my heart, I have it, in, I have it hanging in my, uh, in my desk, in my office there. And it reminds me of the redeeming power of God. And all of a sudden, yesterday, uh, last Sunday, as I'm sitting up here, uh, the guy comes and goes, hey, Mark, you remember me? And he's got a mask on his face. I said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't who, who are you? And he says, my name is Daniel. And all of a sudden, I remembered that's him. And he's in church. In the path of the righteous, there's life constantly. And God is just constantly giving to me and just reminding me constantly over and over again, continue to yield to me, continue to trust me. I'll still use you regardless of how you think about yourself and I will still redeem people's lives if you just stay faithful and obedient to what I'm calling you to do. Amen? And so all of a sudden we have a whole family who's come to Christ, he's married, and I don't know all the details of his life, but it just reminds me of that passage of scripture that says, in the path of the righteous there is life. So examine yourself in this area. You'll never be moved. You'll still bear fruit. You'll get back up. You'll have a life-giving spirit, a life-giving family. And just encourage yourself. Just say, thank you, God, for 2020. And we're moving forward in his name. Amen. Amen. He is faithful. Now, real quick, I'm going to close with this. And guys, y'all want to come back up because I want to sing this last song. Um, yes. Good job, Delilah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I already kind of said it, but in 2021, you know what? I'm just going to say it. Um, this is a word from the Spirit of God, <laughs> okay? Amen. I'm not saying I'm any elevated any beyond you or anything, but I'm just saying it's not going to get easier, folks. You know, we have a vaccine. We have all the stuff that's coming up, and that's great. But there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes, and I, I could care less about the political stuff and all that stuff. I'm talking about in the, in the spiritual world. The enemy's coming to try to destroy your life, to try to destroy your family. And, and it, little things like this, you know, affected a whole globe. And um, 
The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But just remember, Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly, okay? But unless you understand and know how to walk with God and hear his voice, let me just talk to the men real quick. Gentlemen, you know, we work hard, man. We're at the helm. God has given us grace to lead our family and to provide for our family. That's a burden that we have. It's a good burden. It's a godly burden because he wants to use us to lead the way. But don't, for the sake of pursuing more work and extra money for extra stuff, don't do that at the expense of your relationship with Jesus. You need to hear his voice. You need to put your faith and trust in the Lord. Like, I don't know about all that, Marcus. I, I don't know what his voice sounds like. It's okay. Just as long as your heart is there and saying, God, I want to know who you are. I want to guide my family. I want to lead my home. I want to love my spouse. I want to help my children. If you have that heartbeat and you cry out to him, God will take care of the rest. I promise you he will. If he did it to me, and man, I was the scum of the earth. If he did it to me, he'll do it for you. He will help you hear his voice. He will help you say no to those decisions that are weighing heavy on you or yes. He will do that. He will honor that, that prayer in your life. And unless we learn how to navigate on a daily basis with our Jesus and with, our, with the Spirit of God, we're going we're gonna to make decisions that we'll regret later. Because things are constantly changing and they're going to be changing so fast. And the only way to help you navigate through quick changes like that is by, under, by allowing the voice of God to be over and above all this other noise that you're going to hear. And the noise that you hear is going to be people that you love, parents, individuals you respected, but they're being swayed by another spirit. That's right. That's right. But you need to be thankful and you need to be focused on the spirit of God and your relationship with him. Because the scripture said Jesus came when he came, when he, he said it this way, he goes, father will be against mother, son will be against, there'll be some decisions you will have to make because God is leading you and your family a certain way. Some of you might be wondering, why in the world am I here in Seguin? Because God led you here. Why in the world am I in this church? I don't even like the way the guy preaches. God led you here. Because I'm telling you the truth, man. I'm telling you, you need God and God needs you. He wants you to build. What, 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 when he came and, and gave the, 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 um, uh, the mandate and the commission to the disciples, he said, go. Go does not mean sit at home, hopeless, defeated, wondering, not knowing. Go is, you don't know, but you're going and the Spirit of God will show you in that moment as you go, you'll know, you'll flow, you'll be in God, you'll be connected with him. It's going to be so beautiful. And we're going to laugh together as you tell me your stories. Man, I heard the Lord say this. He told me to give you a thousand, hundred thousand dollars or whatever. I don't know. But I'm just telling you this, that I really believe that's, that's what the Lord's stirring in my heart. And so the first series of 2021 is going to be called Win the Day. Because we can make projections and we can, you know, look at the calendar year, but it's day by day, day by day. You know, yesterday is history, right? And the future, man, is a mystery. All you have is today. So you learn have to get to learn how to win the day. And God will help you to win the day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And then when you put it all together, you realize that you're right in the smack mack in the middle of God's will for your life. And he's making provision abound towards you. Amen. Take that to heart. Keep your hope alive in Jesus. Amen. That's all we have. Let's all stand. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.